Since 1959, the West End of Kingston, Jamaica, has throbbed with a musical beat. A hypnotic sound of surging excitement and power. People hearing it became caught up in a frenzy and couldn't help moving to this pulsating, almost religious beat. This is Ska! Ska is really just a combination of elements already found in Jamaican mento music and calypso music from Trinidad and Tobago, and both of these have their origins in West African tribal music. Ska takes these traditional rhythms and mixes them with the jazz and rhythm and blues that was popular in the United States at the time. Its emphasis on the second and fourth beats in the bar gave the music a jumpy feel, great for dancing, which is one of the reasons it took off in Britain in the 1960s as well. Were the Whalers, Bunny Whaler, Bob Marley, and Peter Tosh. In 1964, within a year of Studio One's opening, they sold an astonishing 70,000 copies of Simmerdown. By the time World War II ended, Inga was badly bruised, looking to its far-flung colonial population to help rebuild. Because along with their hopes and dreams, they also brought style and some brand new sounds. Both found favor with these white working class kids and seemed to contradict the emerging racism of the times. Man, when two-tone broke, it hit big time. It had that magic combination of danceable music with style and attitude. But the art is being able to slip ideas in underneath all of that. I mean, you know, they're singing about unemployment, they're singing about racism, they're singing about teenage pregnancy. The bands are actually multiracial and they signposted the way that UK culture was heading. That it was the people that got behind multiculturalism that would make England great again. The beat. Two-Tone had a distinctive look and its own sound, a fusion of rock and ska. For the audience, Two-Tone's inclusive message made it more of a movement than a fan. Gangsters was the first Two-Tone single, launching a new look, a mix and match of clothes once worn by skinheads, mods and rude boys, and with it, a new ska punk sound. The essentials of skinhead style are enduring. Mohair tonic suits. Check button down shirt. Rolled up slim cut jeans. Loafers, brogues and Doc Martin boots. In the realm of pop music, the third wave did crash. But the classic mix of Jamaican dance music and punk, now known throughout the world as ska, spread throughout the empire of popular culture, evolving uniquely in each place and time. Originating in Jamaica, ska has evolved drastically in the underground of Los Angeles. The music is characterized by its fast tempos, blazing horns, and most importantly, the punk and metal influences that put the core in ska core. De esta realidad que aparte pues es la del barrio, ¿no? La misma identidad también que tenían eh, los Root Boys en, en Jamaica o toda la banda también de la working class en, en, en Gran Bretaña, en Londres, en Inglaterra, ¿no? Agarramos este género y lo combinamos con todas nuestras referencias, ¿no? El mambo, la cumbia y de hecho el, el set afrolatino. At the time, I wanted to do something that kind of uh, represented what, what the original idea of Scout was. It was based on this two-tone movement between black and white, and harmony through music. I felt like Scott had gone away from that. It kind of like this silly, especially with young people, their perception of style is very like corny, carnival, like you know, it was very political. 
I don't think that ska needs to be on mainstream radio to be um, to be appreciated or recognized or validated. It doesn't it doesn't need to be because it's always going to exist.